So we're going to hear from Professor Nolan Stoltz, and he is from the University of South Carolina State. U.S. Highway 66 in music. Please welcome Nolan Stoltz. Thank you. Greetings. This presentation will cover several pieces of music inspired by, related to, or named after U.S. Highway 66, which, although no longer officially exists, remains to be the most famous road in the world. U.S. Highway 66, or as it's certainly most known colloquially, Route 66 spans from Santa Monica, California to Chicago, Illinois. In this image, I've indicated cities that appear in the most well-known piece of music about U.S. Highway 66, and that's Bobby Troop's Route 66, a song written in 1946, which was 20 years into the highway's existence. In February 1946, Troop moved out west to L.A., picked up 66 in Chicago, taking it all the way to Los Angeles, a trip that inspired the lyrics. Let's listen to a clip of Nat King Cole's recording to explain the geography of this famous route. Just a quick note about the YouTube version of my talk. I will omit the audio examples. Even though they were fair use in the presentation, YouTube algorithms don't quite understand fair use, so without it getting triggered or anything. So um, that's why you're not able to hear the audio examples in this YouTube version. I'm also adding, adding some more uh, visual elements, extra slides, just to make uh, visually more interesting uh, since you're only going to be looking at the slides while I talk. All right, enjoy. Another well-known piece of music related to U.S. Highway 66, especially for a particular generation, would be the theme to the television show titled Route 66. Although the show was named for the historic highway, most of the episodes did not take place on Route 66. And I do not know if Nelson Riddle was indeed inspired by the road, as it could have been merely a commissioned work. But culturally speaking, many listeners do associate this music with U.S. Highway 66. Let's listen to the portion that appeared during the opening credits. Before Troops Route 66, there was Woody Guthrie's song about U.S. Highway 66 titled Will Rogers Highway. It was recorded in March 1940, but perhaps was written earlier as 66 was sometimes unofficially referred to as the Will Rogers Highway following Rogers' death in 1935. The, the lyrics are geographically incorrect as 66 did not go from coast to coast. It went from Chicago to LA, not New York to LA. Being from Oklahoma, Guthrie's lyrics have to do with the migrations of Oklahomans to California looking for work, very much like John Steinbeck's 1939 novel, The Grapes of Wrath. Let's listen to the fifth verse. I've come across several album collections of songs related to Route 66, but these songs are by different artists and often these are merely one-offs. So, although certainly related to this presentation, the scope of each of these songs is not large enough to be considered here. However, this 1994 album from Illinois-based singer-songwriter David Williams is a large enough project to examine for the purposes of this paper. Lyrics in half of the album's 16 tracks are related in some way to Route 66, and the other eight songs do not seem to have a connection to Route 66 at all, but they don't necessarily sound out of place either. For this, I would consider this a near concept album. The eight songs listed on the screen have some lyrical content relating to US Highway 66. The album's opener and closer is an original song titled Route 66, not a cover of the Bobby Troop song. This bookended structure helps the, to make the album seem like a concept album. Two songs have Route 66 cities in their titles. Track two, Chicago, Chicago by the Lake, and track eight, Born in Joplin. The former Pig Hip Diner, which was located in the Route 66 town of Broadwell, Illinois, is mentioned in the song, When the Road Used to Run. 
The song Spooklight is about a legend that originated from an area near Route 66 in southwest Missouri, southeast Kansas, and northeastern Oklahoma. The other two songs listed here merely mention Route 66, that they are Day Old Worries and On the Road, which references Bobby Troop's Route 66. Let's listen to a selection from David Williams' song, Route 66. So it is clearly uh, closer to country than it is to the jazz of Troop. Next, let's listen to a selection from track two, Chicago, Chicago by the Lake, which seems to set up a westward journey. Notice the use of the harmonica and the blues elements in this song. The lyrics in that song mention the blues bars as well as the symphony. Orchestra Hall, the home of Chicago Symphony Orchestra, is located directly on the 1955 to 76 alignment of Route 66 and mere feet from the 1926 to 55 westbound alignment. This work, Route 66, A Musical Journey, is a collection of easy piano pieces clearly intended for pedagogical purposes. They were composed by Mary K. Sally, a piano instructor in Oklahoma. At the beginning of the collection, Sally states that in her youth, her parents drove her 25 miles to the Route 66 town of Claremore for piano lessons. She also writes that she and a college friend took a road trip on Route 66 to Tulsa, which she described as both memorable and scenic. Most of the eight pieces in this collection have a title that relates to the eight states through which Route 66 traverses. It does not seem like a trip along the entire route was the inspiration, but perhaps a few places along the way. For instance, the Chain of Rocks Bridge connects Illinois to Missouri. Tucumcari Tonight was an advertising slogan along 66 for places in Tucumcari, New Mexico. Fun at the Snowcapped Drive-In is named for a restaurant in Seligman, Arizona. The music is not wacky like this place is. There are no commercial recordings of this work available, only some YouTube videos of the composer at the piano. Let's hear the beginning of the Illinois piece to get a sense for the composer's musical language. There are several examples of blues progressions in this collection, perhaps to represent America or to reference Bobby Troop's Route 66. In this, in, uh, in the Kansas piece titled Longhorn Layover in Baxter Springs, there is a four bar introduction followed by two times through a 12 bar blues progression, ending with a four bar extension, a codetta if you will. Here are the first 16 measures. And that's my car on my way here. I had a three day layover in Baxter Springs, waiting for the snow to melt. Michael Doherty's orchestral work from 1999 titled Route 66 still gets performed fairly regularly. From program notes and the music itself, it seems as if the piece were named after Route 66, but perhaps not directly inspired by it. Here are some reasons why I came to that conclusion. The program notes say it was commissioned and premiered by the Kal Kalamazoo Symphony Orchestra, but Kalamazoo is not on Route 66. It says that US Highway 66 was the first intercontinental highway, and perhaps the intention was to say transcontinental, but 66 only spans about two-thirds of the country, and it certainly was not the first to do so. The program notes mention that it is a two-lane asphalt highway, but that's only the case in parts. Some are gravel or dirt, some are one lane, some are four lane. Musically speaking, the program notes mention a Latin groove on cowbell, and it's unclear if that was intended to represent anything about Route 66. Let's listen to the opening. The program notes say the break drum, quote, pulsates like the yellow painted line that divides the two lane asphalt highway. The program notes also say that the tuba solo, quote, signals the only traffic light of the journey, unquote. Obviously, there's more than one traffic light on Route 66, so this is referencing the point in the piece where the music is not rhythmically driven. Let's listen. I would surmise that the piece is not about Route 66 in a programmatic sense, but rather named for it 
not unlike the 1960s TV show mentioned earlier. Perhaps the music was inspired by a drive along the highway, but which highway is not made explicit. My current compositional project is the Route 66 Suite for Orchestra, but there will also be a version for Symphonic Band. It will be directly inspired by different aspects of Route 66, and the program notes will describe the influence explicitly. I also plan to write a narrative of about 11,000 words so that one can read it in about the same amount of time it takes to listen to the entire suite. I had been thinking about writing this piece since about 2015, but I began to make concrete plans in 2020. I am on sabbatical for the 2021-2022 academic year so that I can travel up and down Route 66 multiple times, getting to know everything I can about this historic highway. I consider this to be the pre-composition phase, and I will start to write the music later this year, with plans to complete the work by 2024 in time for premieres in 2026 in celebration of the 100th year anniversary of Route 66. It will be a follow-up to my Lincoln Highway Suite for orchestra, which was completed in 2013 for the 100th anniversary of that historic highway. Select movements were premiered that year, and the first performance of the entire suite was in 2014. The symphonic band version was completed that year, and the premiere of that version was in 2015. The Brno Philharmonic of the Czech Republic recorded the work in 2017, and it was released on a Blaze Records in 2018. Each of the five movements represent a different region through which the Lincoln Highway traverses. It can be performed westward, that is, movements 1 to 5, or eastward, movements 5 to 1. I will not design the programmatic elements for the Route 66 suite geographically. Instead, each of the eight movements will be on a different aspect of Route 66 that I want to reflect in the music. I plan to design the work in two halves, as if it were Act 1 and Act 2, with the ending of Movement 4 recalling material from Movements 1 through 3, and Movement 8 recalling material from the entire work. The opening movement will be titled A.D. 1926, referencing the year Route 66 was established. What I do to get inspiration for this movement is travel the original alignment and look for places that would have existed at that time. For instance, 66 originally came down Foothill Boulevard along the north side of Citrus College. It then turned south and west again. We're at the northeast corner of where 66 turned during the years 1929 and 1934. Even though the street signs outside may say Route 66 and Google Maps says Historic Route 66, the original was a bit north of here. Here's an example of a building from the early days of Route 66 on the original alignment. This is just west of here. Like a painter might take pictures of places and have them in their studio to work from, I am out on Route 66 taking pictures and videos and will bring them back to my studio. That way, I can filter out modern and non-66 related things and curate my own version of Route 66 of things that I find inspiring for the music. Sometimes places will inspire multiple movements of the suite, so there will certainly be references to musical material across various movements. For instance, this station in Rancho Cucamonga dates back to 1915, so it is inspiration for both the AD 1926 and 26 gas stations movements. The title is an homage to the 1963 photography book 26 Gasoline Stations by Ed Ruscha. In 1962, he took Route 66 from L.A. to Oklahoma City and took photos of gas stations along the way. I spent 26 weeks last year tracking down the original locations of those stations. And then, last summer, I went to those places to be in the same spot Roche once was and to see what it looks like today. Most of them have been torn down. For instance, this coffee bean and tea leaf in West Hollywood is located where this Texaco station once stood. Because most of these stations are gone, and because I wanted to represent the whole route and not just between LA and Oklahoma City, I have been choosing my own 26 for the composition. One of the other movements will be titled Neon Dreams. Normally I would not include a chain restaurant, but this Cane's here in Azusa has a great neon sign that certainly has a Route 66 aesthetic. 
the sign on the right was once part of the Foothill Drive-In Theater. Azusa Pacific University purchased the drive-in, but they kept the sign, and they still use it for announcements. The bright colors of neon signs will become bright harmonies and bright timbres. I also take videos of neon signs, if they are animated, and I will use them to think of rhythms. Many neon signs are simply on and off, but they might have an interesting rhythm. For example, the Blue Swallow Motel along Route 66 in Tucumcari, New Mexico, has a neon sign that flashes on and off in a 3 to 2 ratio, like a dotted half note and half rest in 5-4 time. One, two, three, four, five. On, two, three, off, five. The neon sign at the Wagon Wheel Motel along Route 66 in Cuba, Missouri implies, for me, a fast 11-16 rhythm with a 5 plus 6 division. One, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, six. Next, please notice the pattern in the dog's wagging tail. Low, high, medium, high. It makes me think of the Alberti bass pattern. Low, high, medium, high. The animated sign at the dog house in Albuquerque, New Mexico, has the wagging tail in a pattern that reminds me of Alberti bass. Boo dee doo dee doo dee doo dee. And they go, uh, that's in counterpoint to the sausages going into the dog's mouth. Some animated signs, like this one at Gus's Barbecue in South Pasadena, imply, for me, a quick run or glissando. And I, and I like the upward glissando effect. Or this one at the Circle Cinema in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The Circle Cinema in Tulsa, Oklahoma dates back to 1928 and is on the original alignment of Route 66. Mm. Their animated sign slowly spells out the word circle and then flashes it, but not all at once, but rather like a quick downwards glissando. Billion. So that's something. Neon and old theaters often go hand in hand, so many of them are inspiring both the Neon Dreams and the final movement, The Show Will Go On, which is all about theaters, concert halls, opera houses, and so forth. What I find interesting about the one here on campus is that they kept the berms, the little hills that cars would par park on to point towards the screen. They kept the aesthetic, and I wonder how many students, faculty, and staff know why their parking lot looks like this. Another movement will be titled Among the Trees, taking inspiration from all the old buildings and remnants of abandoned 66 that are being overtaken by nature. I got the title from this sign from a former auto court, now apartments, in rural Missouri. I thought their slogan would make for a very evocative title. On the right is a portion of original 66 that is dirt covered in pine needles and surrounded by trees. On the left is what most likely was a gas station in Hooker, Missouri, now barely a shell of a building among the trees. On the right is 66 that is no longer drivable in a car because trees and other greenery have taken over. Another movement will be titled 66 Ghost Towns, and I've been doing research on ghost towns along 66 and spending time there getting to know the place. Amboy, California is a ghost town that is also inspiring the Neon Dreams movement for its iconic sign and is inspiring the 26 gas stations movement because I enjoy spending time with one of the employees at Roy's whenever I am there. Amboy will also inspire the AD 1926 movement as the original route went right through town. It will also inspire Desert 66 as Amboy is right in the heart of the Mojave Desert. There used to be a motel there as well, so it will also inspire the lodging base movement. This is the only one I do not have a title for yet. My goal is to have a very honest work, an historically informed one, and one that is inspired by personal experiences by truly getting to know the road, its buildings, and its people. I hope you enjoy hearing about music inspired by, or related to, Route 66. We should have about seven minutes left over for questions and change over to the next presenter, but you can also email me at stoltz at uscupstate.edu. I have a webpage and a Facebook page for conductors to get an idea of what the piece is about, 
And for the general public, I have a Patreon page with many pictures and videos from the road and of my progress on the composition, a sort of behind-the-scenes look at the unfolding of this work. Thank you for your time and attention.